Hey, Shalom, Shalom. Okay, and Shalom, first off, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rechah HaKodash, and double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who are on the truth of the gospel of Yahweh Shai from, through the Holy Spirit. Honor, salutations, and blessings to the men that are preaching the gospel of Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, in all sincerity, diligence, and truth, and peace, grace, and blessings be upon the house of David, which is the elect, the men, women, and children that are listening and learning. Keeping the faith of Yahweh Shai and staying in the Holy Spirit to the best of your ability day in and day out. So, um, you know, I have an article that I just want to, you know, uh, briefly go into. Um, as the title reads, a programmable money and digital ID will be the new buying and selling. And, um, you know, this is something that we are, you know, constantly have been, uh, um, you know, sounding the alarm about because we, understand and know through the holy spirit all right the yahweh bashim yahweh shai has you know given us the eyes to see the ears to hear all right so that we can um you know be forewarned of the times you know that is coming all right um as the scripture says um in the book of let me pull it out real quick in the book of um first peter the fourth chapter Verse seven, it says, but the end of all things are are at hand or is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. OK, so we are to be uh, sober, which means to be of a sound mind, right? To be of a sound mind. Let's get that word sober. Dismiss. Let's see what it says in the Greek. So chlaneo, which means what? To be of a sound mind, to be in one's right mind. <laughs> okay. And we can clearly see that, you know, this world that we're that we're living in, people are bugged out of their mind, man. All right. Uh uh, because it's their their minds is uh, polluted with the uh, you know, the wickedness of this world, as it is uh written in Revelation eleven eighteen, destroy him which destroyed the earth, right? And and people's people minds moral decay ethic decay ethical decay all right mental uh, uh decay is um you know at an all-time high right now all right that's why you got you know so many you know different weirdos and murderers and uh you got people eating eating uber drivers right you got people uh uh killing their you know spouses and cutting their hearts out and feeding it to their family because uh, people are not in their right mind OK, so, you know, through the through the Lord's grace and mercy, uh, you know, the Lord has given us the a, a sound mind. Right. And using that sound mind, being in the right mind, we're supposed to do what we're supposed to, you know, uh, uh, watch. OK, watch the things that the Lord is doing. Because we understand that, you know, these things must come to pass in order for the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven to be uh, um, ushered in, right? So, you know, like I said, I'm gonna, run, I'm gonna go through this article. All right, our brother, uh, the brother had put this in our uh, group chat. So this article came out today, which is May 1st, 2023. It says, IMF publishes multi-year plan to implement CBDCs. It may spell the end of our financial freedom and autonomy. All right, so before I forget, let me just throw this in the um throw that in the chat room just in case you know any brothers or sisters want to actually read the whole thing because like i said i'm not gonna read the whole thing i just wanted to touch on highlight you know key points so let's read it it says on the 10th of april the international monetary fund published the imf approach to central bank digital currency capacity development it outlines the imf's multi-year strategy for aiding central bank digital currencies rollouts including the development of a living cbdc handbook for monetary authorities to follow as it develops and includes more details chapter 8 through 11 will be of particular interest to us as they relate to the centralized control over our lives using cbdc's 
that we, the consumers, are most concerned about. Chapter eight, for example, quote, will identify design choices such as operating model, limiting limits in holdings, program programmability, interest bearing, and degree of centralization. And chapter 11, we'll consider the trade-off between data use and private protection, including what data are generated by CBDC transactions and which institutions might have access to it. All right. So like I like this, uh, you know, brief summary or over, you know, overview stated, this is a uh, handbook, so to speak, a CBDC, CBDC handbook for the monetary authorities to follow, meaning what the, the various different um, central banks, right? Because you have, you know, you have the Fed, okay, the United States Central Bank, you have the ECB, the European Central Bank, you have the Japanese Central Bank, etc. But you know, ultimately, you have um, the uh, uh, IMF and the BIS, which, you know, they call the BIS, the central bank of central banks, that, you know, basically is the uh, the umbrella central bank over all of the rest of the central banks, which we know, you know, who is in control of these central banks, okay? Uh, uh, Esau Edom, you know, chiefly uh, um, Amalek, all right? So... Let's read this. Let's read this. It says programmable money and program uh, programmability. Programmable money does not appear to have a clear definition. Last week, the IMF Deputy Director Monetary and Capital Markets Department, Dong He, briefly mentioned at a seminar on CBDCs the programmability of CBDCs. It can be used as a fiscal tool. It can be used for the uh, for the Internet of Things, the IOTs, but he doesn't go into any detail as to what programmability means or what effects it has on consumers. Alexander Lee of the U.S. Federal Reserve wrote in 2000, June 2021, the term programmable money remains ill-defined. Lee def uh, differentiates between programmable money and programmability. He defines programmability as the mechanism for specifying the automated behavior of a digital form of money through a, a through a computer program and he identifies the components two components of programmable money a digital form of money and programmability however lee warns it is not clear whether these components alone are sufficient for a definition given the various combinations of similar technology for payments automation uh, have existed for decades. So, you know, what I did, I don't know if I have it pulled up actually, but you know, what I just did, I just typed in programmable money and see what, uh, you know, see what pops up. So what is a programmable currency? Programmable money is a money, is money with inbuilt rules and comes with constraints for the user. All right, who are the users? The, the ones who are buying and selling, right? So it has inbuilt rules and constraints. With these money, with like with these rules, money could also be programmed to have an expiration date or be restricted for certain goods, for example. Okay. Let's see what else we got. Uh boom, 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 boom. Okay, so yeah, that that basically basically tells you, you know, what programmable money is. All right, it's money that is has built-in rules and comes with constraints for the user. Meaning what? That they will they will be able to uh, dictate what you're buying and what you're selling. Okay, and the uh, uh, the, the the money can have an expiration date, so you won't be able to be uh, to save up. How much money you want to save up because the money that you have will have an expiration date okay or it says here or be restricted for certain goods for example and not only the goods but the actual people will um they can restrict it for certain people who, who they deem as being you know uh, uh enemies of the state dissidents people who are what they call bad actors right so in this type of system 
All right. In this type of monetary system, they will have complete control over your ability to buy and sell. So let's read on in this. Um, it says there have been many claims, for example, in a report by the Deutsche Bank, Bundy's Bank, Deutsche Bundy's Bank that adding programmability to a CBDC could bring a plethora of economic benefits. However, the FinRang blog noted many of the claimed benefits either already exist or could have developed within existing systems. It says the the CSIN century described programmable money as money with constraints. It seems to be based on the notion that since money is already digital, and exist as records on computers at commercial and or at central banks, then it is programmable. You can have programmable central bank money, programmable commercial bank money, programmable e-money, sometimes called stable coins, and programmable any type of money. Okay. Um, so they use they use uh, food stamps for an example, right? So it says an, an, an analogy is food stamps where recipients are given coupons the equivalent of money, which can be spent only on food, not on alcohol, betting on horses, lottery tickets, or anything else. In modernized guise, these food stamps are digitalized tokens transacted on a blockchain platform with smart contracts. So just like how with food stamps, you can only use the food stamps to actually buy food. They can they can you do that with the actual money that you have. So your uh, your actual money <laughs> that you you know work for or you know that you need to go into a grocery store to go to get gas whatever they could have that programmed to to specific types of goods or services. Okay, so it says Finextra identifies the risk of CBDCs and highlighted the risk of connecting CBDCs to digital identities. CBDCs pose a combination of risk to consumers, financial, economic, and human rights that are potentially severe if a CBDC is designed badly or with bad intent. Now, of course, we already know that it is designed with bad intent, but what this devil is doing is he is uh, causing paeo, right? He is causing, forming, or fashioning a society to where this seems as if it's uh, it's necessary, right? And they're also using this as a uh, um, as a uh, tool to say, well, we can make the system better, all right? We can fill the gaps or the holes or the cracks within the system with this CBDC uh, uh, type of money, all right, with digital uh, currency, because clearly the commercial banks, as you just had, what just happened earlier today. Uh, First Republic Bank, they basically got seized in uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, which is the biggest, biggest bank in America. It bought that bank. It bought that bank up. So similar to what happened over there in uh, Switzerland with um, UBS buying Credit Suisse. All right. Cons uh, con consolidating all these big uh, all these you know, banks. And uh, uh, then being absorbed into the bigger banks which these big banks, right, the, the biggest banks, they are already in, working in tandem with the IMF, the uh, IMF, the, the BIS, the uh, WEF, right, all of these so-called, you know, think tanks that ESO uses to push out his agenda, all right? So we already know, you know, how J.P. Morgan Chase gets down uh, uh, and the fact that they already are, you know, uh, a major player in this um, new digitalized currency, because J.P. Morgan Chase even came out with a, and I, and I did a video on it a couple of weeks ago. Let me see if I can find the headline. Uh, J.P. Morgan. Let's see. Uh, digital payments. Uh, let me see, digital, pay with palm, I think something like that, pay with, pay 
There we go. So it says uh, JP Morgan to let consumers pay with face instead of card, right? And this came out, like I said, last, uh, well, not last month, two months ago, March 23rd. It says here, here's how it works. Consumers enroll their face, their, so like enroll their palm, aka their hands, or face through an in-store process. Then at checkout, they scan their biometrics to complete the transaction to get a receipt. The new offering is from JP Morgan's spiraling, spir a spiraling payments business, which competes with the likes of Fidelity National Information Services Inc. So JP Morgan is already having a, a technology to where their consumers will be able to pay with their palms, aka their hand, or their face, their meta palm, their forehead. Okay. So it's no coincidence that. You got these uh, other banks that are, are you know, being seized up, that are losing uh, liquidity. And then here it is. You got banks like JP Morgan that is buying them all up and basically absorbing all of their clients. OK, because it's easier for them to centralize, you know, all of the various, you know, all of the people that use bank, the commercial banks. It's easier for them to centralize that into a few banks. And then those few banks are working, you know, already with the uh, the the central banks, right? The, the the BIS, the IMF. So when they bring in the CBDCs, those few centralized banks like J.P. Morgan, like uh, Bank of America, et cetera, they will be a smooth transaction for all of their clients into this new buying and selling um, mechanism. All right, this new buying and selling. Uh, uh, type of monetary system okay so let's re keep going down it says uh if designed inappropriately cbdc's have the potential to be used as tools of surveillance and control by governments right and we know that who ultimately controls the government the governments it's who the central banks all right the the the, the money where you got to follow where the money is. that's why you got things called uh, lobbyists, right? That's why you have uh, uh, um, these campaigns, quote unquote, where these different uh, um, organizations and businesses, they give money to these, uh, quote, elected officials. Because it's not really about the governments, it's about who is giving the money to the governments. As we always uh, quote, Meyer Amschel Bauer, as he says, give me control over nation's uh, money. I care not who make the laws because the money is really is where the uh, the laws are going to be created from. All right. Or, or whoever controls the money, I should say, is really is the one who is going to make the laws. Right. So. The CBDCs has the potential to be used as surveillance and control by governments. Every transaction is recordable. And any authority with access to the CBDC ledger can see all transactions. They could also control individuals through the ledger, such as putting expiry dates on their CBDCs, limiting how much they can hold, the uh, varying interest rates and prices depended on who they are, preventing purchases and automatically deducting fines. So you so you see what type of totalitarian, uh, to tyrannical society that that would lead to. All right, here you had Jake in this mindset about getting you know uh, financial freedom, all right, you know uh, generational wealth, and you know trying to set up uh, uh, themselves for the future and their children. All the while, they're not realizing that what <laughs> that's a it's the deceivableness of rich of riches, man. Okay, actually, let me pull this up. I think that's First Timothy, the sixth chapter. Let's see. Um, First Timothy, chapter six, verse um, seventeen. It says, "Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but the but in the living God." who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, all right? But what is our people mainly doing? They're, they're trusting 
in the uncertain riches. They're trusting in, you know, the, the, the bag of Babylon, which that's ultimately going to be to their confusion, to their uh, snare, and to their trap. All right? They're trusting in oppression. Because money in itself, in the way that Esau has used money in this society, it is, in, is in an oppressive way. But now he's he's coming out with this new system where they can literally surveillance you and control you based on your money. All right? Based on buying and selling. And a lot of people are going to fall right into that trap because, uh, let me, let's go back to first, uh, first Timothy six, because of this first Timothy six, verse uh, 10, it says, you know what? Let me start at, uh, eight. It says, and having food and raiment, let us be there with content. See, that is a mindset of, of, of one who is, as the Lord said, that we're supposed to be pilgrims on the earth. Okay, we know that this is not our rest. Here we have no continuing city. So when you have that mindset, when you have put on the mind of Yahweh Shai, right, then all you really will be content with is food and and raiment, uh, a roof over your head, clothes on your back, food, uh, you know, your daily bread. That's it. But the 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 the, the people of this world, these Babylonians, have been so you know uh, uh, edematized to where they have made God their gold. They have made money, you know, their their God. And that's why Yahweh Shai said that you can't serve the Most High in Mammon. And you're really about to find out why, uh, how that, the, how that 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 dynamic uh, uh, really plays out in the world, man. You're really about to find out how many people really do worship money, because that's what Mammon is, money. And how many people put that over. You know, uh, uh, the the uh, over the Most High. Well, you know, people that don't really even know Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai, then they don't really even serve, you know, the true living God. But nonetheless, you got a lot of our people who claim to be believers in the Bible, believers in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, etc. All right, believers in the Son of God. All right, who they ignorantly call Jesus Christ. But when it comes to, uh, uh money when it comes to, and they show you that in the churches all the time okay these so-called pastors in these christian churches who claim to be men of god i've i've seen pastors you know i've heard pastors say that they're not going to teach they're not going to preach if they don't get a certain amount of uh uh, uh money in that you know in that little uh, basket man and because because that's who these people really serve that's who they really worship they worship money and Esau knows that, and he's going to capitalize that. He's going to capitalize off of that by what? Bringing in that, that MOTB, which is going to be the way that you can continue to buy and sell, the way you can continue to have your, uh, you know, have money. So let's read on verse six. Uh, so like in verse nine, it says, but they that will be rich, see that? But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Okay? So that's why you not you should not labor to be rich. That's why King Solomon, you know, scripture says, what? Give me neither poverty nor riches. All right? But just give me what is, uh, con, you know, what is uh, uh, meat for me so that you can be content. But a lot of people... When this whole system, you know, when this thing gets uh, uh, trans transferred to this to this uh, digital system, a lot of people are going to fall right into that snare and that trap. Because what? Because they're not going to want to give up their four hundred one k. They're not going to want to give up their you know high paying job. They're not going to want to give up their government assistance. All right, their WIC, their uh, uh, um, food stamps, Section Eight, etc. So they're going to willingly, willingly, a lot of people are willingly going to go into this snare and this trap, man, not realizing it's going to be to what? It's going to be to what? Their destruction and perdition, to, to them being destroyed, because the warning was already out, okay? The Lord already put it out, what's the what's the consequences of, you know, taking that, taking that MOTB? So let's keep going. It says... um. 
The combination of digital ID and CBDC is also a big risk. Access and addressability are needed for digital payments, but these are different to digital identity. In a world of programmable money, digital identity can go beyond just enabling access to your funds. You see that? So digital ID, so like a digital identity is going to be used to enable access to your funds. And that's why those uh that that Karagma is going to be specialized, you know, to to you. Okay? That's why, you know, we always mention Klaus Schwab said it that the fourth industrial revolution will not only change the way you interact in society or in environment, it will also change you. All right? That money will be embedded inside of you. And really it's your it's your uh your wallet, just like how you put your wallet inside of your pocket. Well, this this wallet would be biometric. Okay. It says use of those funds can be made conditional on attributes of your digital identity. If those funds are in CBDC, then the central bank, by implication, the government can control directly how you spend and receive money. All right, let's read that last sentence again. If those funds are in CBDC, then the central bank and by implication, the government can control directly how you spend, uh, buy, and uh, receive money, okay? Uh, getting money in. So could you sell your services and then you receive money? You, you, uh, uh, you get money and then you get money to what? Spend money buying and selling. So it says, be wary of anyone advocating for digital identity to be connected to CBDC. And, and, it's, and, it's, and it's going to be. Because if you got digital currency, then you're going to need what? Digital identification. It says, while digital identity is needed to find fraudsters, money launderers, and other criminals, there is no monetary reason to combine CBDC with digital identity. Well, they're, go <laughs> they're going to uh, um, portray it to be necessary, all right? And that's why they're doing all of these various different steps through gradualism to uh, uh, put different pieces together. It's like a puzzle. You put a piece here, a piece there, a piece there, and eventually you'll see, the you'll see what the puzzle is, the picture, but once again, you got to be sober minded. You got to be watching in order to see these different pieces. All right. A lot of people still don't see how CBDC's digital identity and the uh, uh, the CHIP are all connected. And that's why the scripture says that it's going to come upon them as a uh, as a thief. Because we're seeing it happening, you know, right now, how everything is connected. But majority of people. They don't even they're, they're still they're blinded. You know, they know they don't have the uh, prudence to be able to connect these dots. Even people who claim to be, you know, uh, uh, teachers who claim to be, you know, in the truth that doesn't that don't understand or they are willingly ignorant of what the MOTB is. And you have a lot of people who are following after those those uh, false teachers. They're going to they're they're not being uh, uh, um, mindful of that as well. OK. So it says, yet connecting C CBDCs to digital identities seems to be exactly what central bankers are proposing. It says connecting CBDCs to digital identities. On the 27th of September, France Central Bank, the, the bank, the Bank of France, a Bank de France, held an international roundtable in which central bankers from the US and the EU confirmed that digital dollars and in, in euros. Uh, should they go forward would not be anonymous, okay? Meaning what? That they're going to know exactly who's buying and who's selling. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell said that concerning an American CBDC rollout, one of the characteristics is that the CBDC is identity verified. So it would not be anonymous. It will not, it will not be an anonymous bearer instrument. Christine Lagarde, president of European Central uh, Bank said, in terms of anonymity, there would not be, so like it, there, there would not be complete anonymity 
as there is with banknotes. So there, as with, you know, actual physical cash right now, it's, uh, you, you know, you can't tell. You can, If I have a $20 bill, this $20 bill is not connected, you know, to, uh, to me. All right. If I wanted to spend twenty dollars in a store, the government won't know that I spent twenty dollar bill, a twenty dollar bill in you know a Walmart or et cetera. But they're coming out with their own mouth saying that with central bank digital currency, everything that you spend is going to be recordable and, and tracked. So how 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 could this type of system not be um, uh, in the scriptures, man? How could this type of monetary, when this is something that is happening globally, how could this type of monetary uh, uh, system of buying and selling not be recorded by the profits? Because this is, like I said, this is going to change the complete aspect of society when it comes to when it comes to you know uh, doing business, when it comes to the to the to the uh, market. All right, the marketplace. So it says, in other words, CBDCs would require some form of digital identity scheme. And what is the purpose of a digital identity? The World Economic Forum has clearly stated how they envision it. The digital identity determines what products, services, and information we can access or conversely, what is closed off to us. All right. And that was from identity in a digital world a new chapter in the social construct world economic forum um september 20 uh 2018 so digital identity determines what products services and information we can access all right or what is closed off to us so if you connect your digital identity with the cbdc there there goes your he calls it thought small and great rich and poor free and bond right to receive that karagma who who don't receive it won't be able to buy and sell because your buying and selling will be based off of your digital identity in this system in this uh new uh uh um a monetary you know uh uh system so if you're not linked di in a digital in, in this if you don't have digital identification then you won't be able to use the digital money. And if you're not able to use the digital money, then you won't be able to actually go out in the marketplace buying food, buying clothes, buying, et cetera. So let's read on. It says, uh, I'm going to jump around. All right, CBDC's programmability and digital identities. A digital identity encompasses everything that makes you unique in the digital realm. It is a system that can consolidate all of your most personal intimate data, including which websites you visit, your online purchases, health records, financial accounts, and who you're friends with on social media. So you think a, a person, <laughs> you think a, a person who um, identifies as an Israelite, you think they're going to be, you think they're going to let them be. Um, be be you know able to be within the society you will you if you identify as an israelite if you believe in the truth then you wouldn't even be down with this right and that's why in, in scripture tells you where they go it says what they cause as many as would not have worshiped the beast should be killed that word killed it can be taken literal but it also meaning what to be separated all right that's your let's pull that up because if you don't worship the beast, if you're not down with this system, if you're not down with digital identities and using digital programmable money, then you're in essence not down with the, the, the government. You're not down with the way the society is going, right? So Revelation 3 verse 15, it says, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Right. So when you go into this word uh, killed. It says, let's go to the root word. Right here, it says of separation. OK. 
So think about it as being separate, uh, separated from uh, society. Not being able to work, not being able to buy, not being able to do transaction. If you don't do what? If you don't worship the image of the beast, if you're not down with the, you know, the, 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 the various wicked, um, impious agendas that Esau is at this very moment pushing out. Okay. At this very moment, there's, there are legislations, there are different type of bills that Esau is passing, you know, within Babylon. Okay. But we you know within, without, within the beast period that go contrary to the, uh, to the spirit of righteousness that goes contrary to the spirit of Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shah. And you have a lot of people that, you know, uh, 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 see these things, but because the pressure isn't on yet, so they can still, you know, uh, uh, speak out about it. They can say that they're not going to, you know, be down with it. But there's a lot of people who are saying that now that when that time comes, they're actually going to uh, 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 fall into it. They're actually going to go down with it because ultimately, Yahweh Shai has to keep you in this time. All right. Revelation three verse um, was at 10. And only only ones who Yahweh Shai is going to keep are the ones who have been doing his will, who are the ones who have been keeping the word of his patience. And then you have the others, right? You know, like the, the, the gun hole, uh, uh, patriotic, so-called patriotic uh, Edomite Americans that are not, you know, that are against the whole tyranny and the whole taking away their rights. And that's where you're going to have the, the, the social wars, the class wars, the civil wars are going to pop up. It's going to pop off at because you're going to have people that are going to go against this and you're going to have people that are going to be with it. And you're going to have people that are, that are initially against it, but they're going to succumb to the pressure, to the tribulation, to the to the to the trying, as it says um, in Revelation, the third chapter. Let me just pull it up real quick. Uh, verse. Um, 10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. All right. Let's see what this word try is. Or try. All right, parazo, which means what? To try whether a thing can be done. All right, to attempt, endeavor, to try, to make trial, uh, uh, to make trial of, to test, for the purpose of ascertaining his quality or what he thinks or how he will behave himself. So if your mind isn't, you know, fully persuaded, right? And in, in, in the truth, in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, then this trial is going to show forth whether or not you really think that this is the truth. Okay? What the Lord has, has come in in the time of the hour of temptation is going to separate, <laughs> is going to separate the, the ones who are really about Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and the ones who are only about that because it's easy right now okay the ones who are about that you know uh uh because it's uh as as paul said let me pull that up as well um hebrew chapter 12 verse 4 it says ye have not resisted unto blood so like you have not yet resisted unto blood striving against sin okay so we have not yet. Let's let's see what this is in a uh, in LT. It says, after all, you have not yet given your lives for your struggle against sin. All right. It says, in your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood, and that is where the the hour of temptation is, is going to play. Now, not everybody's going to have to shed blood, okay? But you are going to have certain martyrs. You're going to have certain. Uh, uh, there's going to be times where you may not know whether or not you're going to eat, but the scriptures does tell you that what my servants shall eat. 
but you're going to have to endure that. You're going to have to have the faith and the confidence in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai that He will that He will feed you, that He will provide for you, that He will protect you from any dangers, any evils. All right, uh, the the sword, etc. Man. So going back to um, uh, took it off here. Going back to Revelation uh, three and ten, where it says, "Oh no, my bad." Where was it at? Okay. Going back to Revelation 3 and 10, where it says to try for the purpose of ascertaining his quality. So the Lord is going to, let's see. Let's go into this word ascertaining. Uh, search. Uh, look up. It says to find something out for certain. <laughs> okay. To find out, to discover. So the hour of temptation is going to is going to find out whether or not you are for certain a a man or a woman of the Lord. That is what the hour of temptation is about. Are you willing to go into the end? Are you willing to give up your life? Are you willing to strive? Are you willing to shed blood to strive against sin? And once again, not everybody's going to do that. The Lord is not going to have every single of his elect, you know, have to, you know, uh, shed blood. But you got to have the mindset that you're willing to do that. Okay? Because when the time comes, if you're not, if you're, uh, uh, once again, as Paul said, examine yourself whether you be in the faith. Your faith is going to be uh, shown whether or not it's of a gold, a precious, precious value. Right? If it's gold or silver, or whether it's of a uh, uh, you know uh, of a value of of a uh, uh, material that is that can't withstand the fire, like wood, hay, or stubble. Okay, and this is why this whole system is a global system because there's no getting around it. There's no escaping it. There's no saying oh, I'm just going to just go leave here and then I'm going to go fly to Europe. I'm going to fly to uh, you know Africa. And they're doing it over there in Africa. They're doing it over there in the Middle East. They, they happen and happen in, in certain Caribbean countries, South American countries, okay? Europe, Asia, <laughs> and North America, it's everywhere. <coughs> all right? This is everywhere, man. That's why, as, as the scripture says, he calls it all. So let's read on. It says, it can be used to determine where product, services, and information are available to you. And it can be certainly and it can certainly be used by public and private entities to deny you that access. So there you have it, man. All right. So he says digital identities, food, financial services, telecommunications. All right. E-government, social platforms, e-commerce, healthcare. <laughs> it's everywhere. All right. It covers all travel, mobility. Humanitarian, humanitarian responses. It covers all aspects of life. There is no way that you can uh, try to, you know, get out of this except it be by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, which is why in the book of Daniel, the twelfth chapter, it tells us that what that that you want. We're going to need divine intervention. All right, the Lord is is having this devil come down with this wrath and cover all aspects, so that as the scripture says in Isaiah. 59th chapter when that enemy comes in like a flood because like when a when a flood comes in guess what when water comes in that fast it comes in at every point any any point that that it can get in is that 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 water is going to get in it going to come through the walls it come come through the floor through the ceiling through the windows everywhere so that's why the lord equivalated the the enemy right esau the the, the wicked coming in like a flood because you're not going to be able to uh, avoid it from a carnal sense. And that's why it says here, Isaiah 59, verse 19. So shall then, so, so, like, so shall they fear my name. Uh, so like, let me read that again. So shall they fear the name of Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai from the west, and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood. The spirit of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, shall lift up a standard against him. So that is what? That is spiritual uh, intervention, divine intervention. 
All right, the things that we read that the Lord did for uh, you know our forefathers. All right, uh, uh, intervening on their behalf on the ones who trusted and believed on Him. That is what we have to you know. That is the way that we're going to be able to escape these things that this devil is bringing down, man. This type of society, this type of system that he is bringing. All right, the Lord is going to have to lift the spirit of Yahweh Bashim is going to have to lift up a standard for us, man. And when you go into that word standard. It, it literally goes into spiritual power, being able to have flight, being able to, uh, uh, you know, disappear. Okay. my uh, As like I said before, Daniel, the 12th chapter, Michael, that great prince shall stand up for the children of thy people. So let's read a little bit. I'll keep, uh, keep going. Um, it says concerning, let's see, those who can associate the use of digital currency with programmability would be the intermediaries, would be the commercial banks. And this is why you're having this whole bank crisis happening right now, because once again, they're going to use, you know, certain banks, the big banks, the ones who, who are who can consolidate all of the smaller banks. They're going to those are going to be the intermediaries or some of them, I should say, to bring out the whole. uh, uh CBDC's type of uh, uh, system, right? So it says concerning user anim uh, anim uh, damn, I just said that word anim anonymity <laughs> and anonymous transactions. Lagarde conceded that a digital currency will never be as anonymous as protecting and as protecting as privacy in many respects as cash, which is why cash will always be around. Which you know that's. That's a, uh, you know, that, that's that double talk that they're speaking, man, because they're, they're a goal, which once again is the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is to bring this type of system. Okay. So just like how you had uh, Trump, not Trump, Donald, not Joe Biden came out today and said uh, the, 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 the uh, banking system is stronger than ever while you having all of these different banks crash. That's what him being a uh, them being a forger of lies, man. But a lot of people, just like how Eve was beguiled, a lot of people is beguiled by this by this serpent. But hey, the Lord has given us the uh, the understanding to know that this He is the devil that the Bible speaks of, and as the Scripture says, never trust thine enemy. Okay, so um, let's see what else we have. I think I might have uh, hit most of everything I wanted to hit. Like I said, it's a pretty long article, but you know, I just want to touch on certain parts. So CBDCs coupled with digital ID, digital ID erode the ability for citizens to transact anonymously. And that is how they, they'll be able to have that control over the ones who, you know, uh, who have uh, assimilated into the system. You're basically giving up your your complete freedom, right? And your complete servitude to the beast. And this is why it's so, this is why the, the penalty of that is is the, the, the second death, because look at what this beast is doing. Look at the, the type of society that he is advocating for, okay? They're pushing, you know, the, 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 the maps, what they call it, uh, minor attracted persons. They're pushing... The, the 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 drags teaching our children they're pushing uh uh men the there's no such thing as a man or no such thing as a woman they're they're, they're pushing the a literal anti-messiah vibration in the world right now i mean Esau's always been like that but now it's completely overt it's out there so if you are still trying to if you're doing things right in order to stay within the system that goes com that goes against the will of your Bashim Yahweh Shai, it goes against his law, statute, and commandments because you put it in that karagma inside of you, which in itself is 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 a uh, you know breaking of the law, right? You put in a foreign object, you, you're cutting of the flesh, making a covenant basically, because that's what you know covenant means to to cut. You're making a cutting of the flesh in order to maintain and stay within this beast system which this beast system is completely like i said opposes 
all things that is called the most high, that is why that that um, penalty is the lake of fire, is the second death. Because you showed who you are, who your allegiance is to by taking that karagma. Okay? So let's see. It says uh, transaction anonymity, like anonymity, more broadly, is a public good and a core bedrock of political freedom in a democratic society. Ultimately, a CBDC linked with digital ID could allow governments and corporations to put permissions on what you can buy with your own money, including expiration dates and when you can spend it. It is a system ripe for total surveillance and control over many aspects of society, and it paves the way for an authoritarian system of social credit that incentivizes uh, coerces and otherwise manipulates citizens' behavior. So they want to manipulate your behavior, but what type of behavior do they want you to have? They don't want you to have a godly behavior. They don't want you to have a behavior where you fear Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, where you serve Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. No, they want you to have a behavior where you are uh, are are subjected unto their Satan Satan Satanism. So that's the behavior that is linked to this to this uh, uh, society. That's why it is the beast, the M O T B, the mark of the the beast, because this beast is uh, contrary to the Most High. And when you take that mark, you're basically saying that what that you are down with the contrariness of this is of of the 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 society that this devil. Uh, perpetrates. Okay, so um, you know, you know, that's it. That's all I want to touch on. You know, uh, let's bring this out, Lord willing. This was edifying unto the elect, giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakah Kadash. Until next time, Shalom.